Tara Rock, you're very welcome. Thank you very much for having me. You've returned to Dublin following your fabulous Rosen Cavalier turn here in March uh, for a gala performance with the full forces of our own RTE National Symphony Orchestra on the 5th of June. It's a program of Mozart, Rossini, Bellini and Richard Strauss, among others. So what are your feelings? You're coming home to an audience, to a concert hall, to an orchestra that knows and loves you. I mean, I can't even begin to explain how exciting it is, you know. For me, what's so great is that it's my first proper real opera gala here to do it with the symphony orchestra, which is, for me, my orchestra, you know. It's the orchestra I grew up listening to, the orchestra that I heard every Friday night when I worked in the concert hall. <laughs> and then also my first professional debuts were with the orchestra. So to come back and do that concert here is so beyond exciting. But to also be able to bring a programme of things that are kind of, let's say, all things that I'm super excited to sing, nearly everything that I've done before, but also one or two sneak peeks of what's to come. So I haven't sung anywhere else. It's going to be their first public appearances, their public debuts, these areas. (laughs) But I think, you know, to get to come home and show things that you've already polished or things you've performed, for example, the Cenerentola, I made my 25th performance of the role just now in Washington. So to be able to come home and sing that aria and know that I can show people what I've learned and what, you know, what exciting things there is still to learn and still to come, because most people that know me have certainly heard some of these things at the very beginning. And I think that's also exciting, hopefully for the audience, Mm -hmm. to see how things have changed or grown or where the voice is at. Obviously also to get to come home and sing for my family, for Ronnie, and well, I hope they enjoy it. And hope that they can also see what I've learned, that the work, the investment that the people here have put into me has been worth it. Mm. I hope. (laughs) I think very definitely. As well as the Rossini, the Mozart, you're also performing uh, some Berlioz as well. And of course our own Balf. The Balf. Mm. Well, you know what? The Balf, so we recorded that here in Dublin the same week that I started at the opera studio in Munich. So I had done my first four days there and I flew home here and did that. And for me, that's really one of the things I did at the start of everything. And to revisit it. Now, I've taken that aria all over the place and I sing it because a lot of people want to know a little bit more about Irish opera. And so I'll always do the dream. And then I always say, listen, we can offer this other incredible music that nobody knows. And really nobody's heard of it. But I do it generally as an encore in recitals when I tour in America or when I tour in the rest of Europe. People go crazy for the aria. So I'm also excited to bring it back now, a little bit older, hopefully more polished. (laughs) Well, I mean, it struck me looking at the repertoire, there really has been a larger shift among the public in appreciation of mezzos over recent years. For sure. Uh, Stars as Von Otter, Bartoli, Joyce Di Donato, your great friend, and now yourself. You've put bel canto roles like Rosina, like Sesto, right there on the map alongside the Mimis and the Violettas. Is that something you experience yourself in your performances? Absolutely. And I mean, I think it's so exciting when you can see that now people really know the repertoire. It's become much more mainstream because, you know, everybody would know the very high soprano things and the showstoppers. Now mezzos also have those those areas. We always had them, but they were just asleep, let's say, for a little while (laughs) publicly. The Rossini, for example, for me is great. I studied them here in the academy. I mean, I opened my first Cenerentola score recently and I bought it in 2006. So that was when I first started to look at it with Ronnie. So when you can take those things that you've done as vocal exercises, as technical exercises and still use them, know that they're healthy. Then you, of course, can pump in an extra level of excitement, which I think brings the audience that same, I hope it brings them the same excitement, and in turn makes the repertoire more sought after, so that people love to listen to it then. It's a different listening experience though, isn't it? It's not a wilting heroine about to die of consumption. (laughs) You're an extraordinary (laughs) Olympian athlete of the voice. Uh, Mezzo-sopranos, they continue on in the same great tradition as the castrato in the centuries of old. You have an extraordinary weight to, um, to your middle and your bass registers, and then this fantastic coloratura on top top. tell me about the training that you have to undergo for this well i mean with ronnie we started with the aria antique and we did maybe six months just 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 working on the middle of the instrument to see where it wanted to go because you know when it's still growing it's very difficult to decide and you've got to stay healthy you've got to pick the healthiest repertoire and that's really not easy 
which in turn means you have to have the right guidance. And for me, Ronnie was a godsend. <laughs> But we started to work really early on the coloratura. We did a lot of handle, really a lot. We did um, Ariodante, Alcina. And all of these things, we did really go from cover to cover, sing through every area until I eventually found my way. And the chords got used to bouncing around, you know, trying all these runs and different coloratura, you know, to try and find how the chords could make it work with my breathing and everything, because it just is muscle memory. It's like running. Mm. It's all muscle memory. And you've got to just put it in there. Train every single day, seven days a week. You can't stop. And there are certain sections, let's say in Cenerentola, that I will use every day to warm up because I still think that they need to be placed slightly differently or I think that they help the voice come into its natural place. It's an extraordinary coming together of physical repetition, as you say, of intellect and of emotion as well. Absolutely. I suppose you never really stop learning from your teachers. You often quote Ronnie and, of course, Geraldine McGee, your first teacher in Dundalk. And these days you're studying with Brigitte Fassbender as Mm -hmm. well, Munich. Yes. You've got to take from anybody who is willing (laughs) to share their knowledge with you. Mm -hmm. I was so lucky to start with Geraldine in Dundalk because Geraldine gave me the absolute fundamentals which are how important storytelling is how important it is to be selfless with your singer or your art regardless of what instrument or what your art might be and to always make sure that your thoughts are with the audience so in other when I say thoughts are with the audience that you feel the energy from the audience and you try to give the audience that particular day what that particular audience need or want Mm -hmm. so that it's organic every day but it's never you and you're never you never go out to sing for yourself or to please yourself what you do in the practice room that's for you the technical work the vocal work even the work on the story but when you go out be it recital opera whatever the work is always for the audience and that of course keeps it so exciting for us that's why you can do a role 600 times because every time it's absolutely different Mm. a different usually of course a different conductor different colleagues that also already adds something but you go out and you work with the energy from the audience Mm. and it changes everything and Geraldine taught me that from the age of 10 so you know when you start with the right fundamentals then when I was about 17 and I started with Ronnie the voice was just coming to the time where we could really start the technical work until then, we had done some breathing and things, but it wasn't really technical, technical, let's say, foundations for the voice to grow. Whereas with Ronnie, we started then only to do technique. So we did nearly 18 months of just absolute solid foundation work, work that I still depend on every day. I do the same scales, the same exercises. I absolutely use the tools that she gave me. And without those tools, I don't know how you could maintain a career. This is the most obvious statement, not even a question in the whole world, but you love singing, don't yeah. you? <laughs> you just, it's so, it's so much part of your signature, everything that you come through. I, all the critics keep on saying the spontaneity, the joy in your voice. Is it something that you, you it's just, it's part of the package. It's there's no part question. Of you. Yeah, yeah, there's no question. But I think that the thing is too, that people forget sometimes, I shouldn't say people forget, but let's say from the audience, maybe they don't realise that we do it for them, mm. you know? Otherwise, anybody could have a, a, a normal job and just sing for yourself. I mean, I sing for myself in the practice room. I try and fix the technical things or do what I want for myself mm. in that room. But from the second you go on the stage, it is not for yourself. Mm. I mean, I didn't make this voice. I came with it. It was in there and I was super lucky, mm. but it was just there. And so I have a responsibility to it. And at the same time, I mean, you can't imagine the buzz that you get when you realize that the audience are coming with you on this journey. Mm. And it's your job or it's my job when I go out there to find, and you find it in about the first 90 seconds, what they want that one night. Because the energy can be totally different. You can sing the same role or the same concert program for four different audiences and it is four different nights. I mean, completely different. And you've got to work with the energy that night and find out what they want, what they need from you and what you can give to them. And it's so exciting, terrifying for the first 30 seconds maybe. But after that, it's really amazing. And when you know that they want to travel with you on whatever the journey is of that night, it is beyond exhilarating. 
Well, we look forward to journeying with you on the 5th of June with the RTE National Symphony Orchestra at the National Concert Hall. Tara Rock, thank you so much for today's chat. Thank you very much.